Welcome back to my garage. Tonight I'm talking about the dyno shield I'm going to make. Uh, this is the current version. That's not the production version. That's just my private version. I'm going to improve some stuff uh, for you guys. Basically the RPM circuit, R RPM pickup circuit. Because uh, the one I'm using now, it, it works, but not all the time. And if you're going to sell something to people, you kind of want it to work all the time. The current circuit, no pen intended, uses a capacitive clamp on the spark plug wire and the resistor and the ca small capacitor forming a voltage divider. And then it enters a transistor. And there's a diode here for protection. And then uh, from the transistor, uh, I, um, I feed the signal into a 555 timer or triple dime timer and that 555 timer is set up as a one shot or a smith trigger uh, basically it um, as soon as it sees a uh, negative on the on the sensor pin uh, it flips the switch and then it keeps the switch on or it keeps the digital pin it feeds high for 2 milliseconds and then it goes low again so uh, no matter what happens up here or at the RPM uh, trigger, uh, in th those two milliseconds uh, it won't switch back. So that's to keep uh, small spikes in the voltage signal from the spark plug to that's to keep that from triggering it and giving false triggers, false signals. I'm no uh, electrical engineer or a guru or anything on this subject. I just know a little bit. So. Don't go elsewhere for knowledge about electronics, but I know some stuff. So I've been thinking a lot lately, uh, haven't made much uh, material for videos out here because, uh, well, thinking doesn't really make good videos. Uh, what I've been thinking about is uh, ways to solve uh, this problem, to get a more reliable uh, RPM engine RPM pickup. So uh, I've been testing. Uh, a neon bulb uh, and a photo transistor together for uh, optic coupling and um, good isolation between um, between the noise maker and the Arduino. The problem with a neon bulb is that it's too dim in this setup to trigger a photo transistor properly. I was thinking about using fiber optics between that bulb and the photo transistor, so that's obviously not going to happen. Um, I also tried just uh, having them close together in a small tube with electrical tape around it. It is too dim, it won't work. I'm going to do a test today with the diode in a different orientation and some um, uh, tin foil around the bulb to see if that might help the problem. Uh, if it doesn't, I'm going to scrap that idea about the neon bulb and photo transistor. I have thought up a circuit that I think will work on anything because the main problem is that there's so many different uh, ignition systems and coils and uh, and the signal will vary in uh, intensity and uh, form and the waveform and all that stuff so um, so we need something that will trigger on basically anything you feed it as long as there's a signal you will have a trigger pulse uh, a circuit that could work is a uh, capacitive coupling on the plug wire uh, going through uh, another capacitor to form a voltage divider to get the voltage down to maybe maybe around uh, say a span from 5 to 30 volts depending on how the high the signal is then a senior diode to clip the signal uh, of any spikes clip to just cut any spikes out of the signal and also remove the negative part of the AC signal and then feed that into a comparator and the comparator will have a reference voltage set very low. So any voltage, no matter how small, almost no matter how small, will trigger the comparator and it will trigger the 555 timer and it should work. So just need to buy some components and try it. If it works, the PCB will be designed and sent off to production and I will get the components and all the shipping stuff I need and all that stuff and you will have the shields in no time our dyno for the people yeah <laughs> so here's my final attempt at using a um, neon bulb and or neon tube and a photo transistor I've taken a allen wrench to make this 19 degree bend 
and I've taped and zip tied the bulb on top of the transistor. I'm going to use some tin foil around it like this and see if I can reflect enough of that dim light into the phototransistor to trigger it. Let's see if it works. I've hooked up the sensor to the spark plug cable of the SPX and when I trigger the ignition it's sparking but even with one mega ohms to the phototransistor which makes it really um, sensitive as you can see on the plotter here there's just a lot of noise but no triggering I'm gonna unplug it and uh, unwrap the tape and show you what it's supposed to look like so here's the sensor without the tape and here's what it's supposed to look like and now there's a lot of noise here because I'm using the one mega ohm resistor but um, just see how it behaves when I put it close to the LED light here so a nice clean zero okay neon tube and photo transistor does not work. I have pulled a couple of infrared uh, diodes from a remote control. I will see how the phototransistor will behave because it is tuned to infrared. So uh, if I tape an infrared diode to, to it and capacitively couple that diode to the spark plug lead. We'll probably kill it but let's try it. I've just um, hooked up this uh, normal red LED to my capacitive clamp and it's grounded to the frame and and as you can see it does actually produce some light when the plug is firing and it doesn't burn out instantly so um, let's try with an ER LED and see what happens so here's an ER LED I salvaged from a remote control TV remote control I'm sliding a piece of uh, shrink wrap around it and around the photo transistor um, let's see how this behaves yeah let's uh, <clears throat> let's hook it up the other way around and see if that helps I think it's safe to conclude that capacitive coupling of a nail bulb or a um, ER LED coupled with a phototransistor does not work very well at all. Okay, so comparator circuit it is. See you next time.